we got Prusa XL news. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and hey, we're gonna be talking all about the Prusa XL. So if you're excited for that, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We've got some good things and bad things going on here. So let's jump right into the Prusa blog post. Let's watch the video that Joe put out and let's hear some opinions on it. We've got an update from the man, the myth, the legend, Joe Prusa himself, all about the XL, what is going on with beta testers and more. But the big key takeaways are listed right here in the blog. And it's all about how the current pre-orders will be switched to regular orders. If you have pre-ordered reserved the XL, we will send you an email when your reservation is ready to be turned into the final order. At this point, you'll be able to edit the shipping address, add more items to your order, and select the shipping method. You can't increase the number of XLs, but you can decrease it if you want. One more important thing to keep in mind, there is no deadline for converting your reservation pre-order into an order right now. What's decisive is the date of the reservation, not the payment. So as soon as you pay for the order, you will jump into the right place in the queue. Now, this is something important for those of you that have pre-ordered an XL and may not be in a financial point to go ahead and purchase it right now, you don't have to dump your pre-orders. You can hold on to them and convert them to an order whenever you feel like it. Technically, it looks like you can also just give it to somebody else because you can edit the shipping address, but I don't really understand how that is all going to play. Now, you are able to upgrade your reservation from a single into a multi, but do not finish your order until they start shipping the multis. Because as we're going to see, the multiple tool heads are gonna take a little bit longer than the singles. So let's hear what Joe Perusha has to say. Hello, everyone. As you can see, I have two XLs here. One is the single tool version and the other one has all the five tool heads. In December, we sent the single tool beta units to our external testers and we also continued our internal testing. So I'm actually aware of quite a few of the internal beta testers. They're getting some pretty decent prints out of it. I mean, publicly, we know that Filament Frenzy and a couple of others have these machines and are doing testing. And they're doing some really big prints and the quality looks phenomenal. Now, I'm not certain as to any of their failure modes, if they have had any yet, but it seems like the machines are doing well so far. So let's get to it and talk about the specific changes we've made so far. First and foremost, we improved the parts for mounting the X carriage and the Y carriages, plus the extruder. We printed them from a carbon filled polycarbonate, so they are much stiffer. I love this addition. Traditionally, Prusas are printed out of PETG, a material that is more ductile than I would like for a 3D printed application with the fan ducts being an ABS or I guess now there might be going to polycarb, but printing out frame components out of carbon filled polycarbonate is awesome. You get the incredible strength and resiliency of polycarbonate with the added stiffness of the carbon fiber. It's the best of both worlds. And with the latest carbon filled PC from Prusa, they're able to do a lot of this in house, saving them a fair bit of R&D time and money. So. A plus for that. And I would guess that those couple of changes were pretty easy to make. Just try it in a different material and put it on. Done and done. In the last development diary, I mentioned that we had issues with the suppliers of linear rails. And I have some good news because after many months of testing, we finally have two equally good options of the, for the rails. So there will be not a problem in the future. So talking about this a little bit more, those that say, well, why don't you just go buy generic linear rails and be done with it? When you're selling a product at this price point, you have to make sure that everything is perfect. Let's not beat around the bush. The Mini and the Mark III were both plagued with some false start issues on the initial release of these machines, which means they had problems. That's a little more understanding, especially when the Mark III came out. And for the price point of the Mini, it's understanding that there might have been some things that need to be changed. But on a machine that starts at $2,000, that's a whole different ballgame. It needs to work right out of the box. You don't want to be spending multiple late nights working on it. Not that I would know anything about spending multiple late nights working on a machine that I paid well over $1,000 for. But anyways, I believe this is the right move. Having multiple suppliers means that you can pull from different inventories from different companies. That way, when one runs low, you have a backup and you have a way to fail over into a different one. We also made some changes to the frame and side panel of the printer. 
because our tests have shown that at certain speeds, the loud side panels can resonate. Thank you, because if there's one thing that I hate, it's a loud printer. We were running the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon along with my, what now, six year old Lulzbot Test 6, maybe five years old. It was it's an older Taz 6. And everyone says how loud the bamboo is. Just try a Lulzbot from, I don't know, 2018, somewhere in that range. They were much, much louder than the bamboo ever is. Being quiet is kind of a big deal. If these machines are to be put into some sort of a light industrial or prosumer atmosphere, we want to make sure they're actually going to not piss everybody off in the room. I appreciate that. If you take a good look at the steel sheet, uh, you might notice that it looks slightly different than the one we've shown previously. During our testing, we discovered something that is pretty obvious in the hindsight. The part of the steel sheet extending over the edge of the heat bed acted as a heat sink, and the heat bed had a hard time compensating for the heat dissipation. We experimented with different shapes, and it still needs to be easily removable and we ended up with a sheet that looks like this. So I'm actually okay with this. We've gotten printers in that have subpar build plates and that has resulted in me just outright replacing them with something like a Wham Bam Pex plate. Taking the time to engineer a proper flex plate that is not going to need to be upgraded from the factory is a massive move in my opinion. Prusa is known for having some of the best build services on the planet and have kind of set the standard for what the generics seem to copy. Now, with that being said, I've been running a Wham Bam Pex plate on the bamboo and absolutely love it. The parts just fall off when the plate is cold and they stick like nobody's business when the plate is hot. And I know that's very similar experiences to what people expect out of the Prusa satin plate, but I prefer smooth plates. So I'll be curious to play with this one because as a lot of you know, I have a five tool head version on pre-order. The XL is equipped with Wi-Fi, but uh, the printer does not require any network access to operate. Thank you. As someone that routinely works with non-disclosure agreements and in industries with further things than NDAs, requiring internet access is a monumental pain in the ass. I don't like it. I want to be able to update the printer via SD card or USB drive. I don't want to have to turn it on to a network and hope that it's not phoning home God knows what. Because G-code files are not all that large, and even in the rural areas that I live, my internet speed is fast enough that any stored G-code on my machines could be uploaded in the amount of time that it takes to download and install a new bit of firmware. So as someone that really cares for not only their data security, but the data security of their customers, this is a big deal. To be able to take the Wi-Fi antenna off never connect the machine to the internet, never plug it into ethernet, and run it solely via micro SD, SD, or USB, whatever they choose to use for the interface, is monumentally awesome. And any company out there that is looking at having Wi-Fi, please don't make it a necessity, and please don't cripple the machine if you choose not to utilize the Wi-Fi, because that's not good either. If there's any processing for AI fail detection or whatever, I want that to be local and I am willing to build a server to do that. I know some customers don't care, but me as a business, I care. And at a $3,500 price point fully kitted out, and that's before any of the optional upgrades that they're gonna be adding, this is a big deal to me. And I don't think I'm alone at this price point either. We have decided to ship the XL with 0.6 millimeter nozzle by default compared to 0.4 millimeter on most machines these days. In our opinion, it's better option for large and durable models. I 100% agree with this. On some of our larger machines, we never run 0.4 millimeter nozzles because it just takes too damn long. And Tom Savider has showed that you can get pretty good quality out of a 0.6 if you just set your line width to 0.4. It doesn't seem to care all that much. But 0.6 gives you that ability to run faster, run harder, and make things easier. I'm happy about this. This is a good move. And it's very simple to go ahead and just swap it out for a different nozzle, should you want. And if you get the 5 tool head version, put a 0.4 on a different tool head. No problem with that. But we also have other uh, nozzle options available along with a special adapter. Yes! Oh my gosh, I was so worried about this. So we can see that the stock nozzle here appears to be kind of a clash between a Revo and a Volcano. It's got the integrated heat break and what appears to be a very, very small, maybe heat sink. I don't know what that piece of brass is, but it's very similar to a 
E3D Revo. This is an Obsidian Revo, 0.6, because it's blue. But they're uh, giving you the option to adapt it to put on a regular V6 compatible brass nozzle. And I could not be happier because uh, your boy is going to put some diamond nozzles on those for sure. Absolutely going to happen. Just like this segue to our sponsor, 3D Musketeers. Remember, 3D printing is difficult and that's okay if you're struggling to get your 3d printers off the ground and just want to outsource it over to 3d musketeers you can do so by reaching out to us in the links in the description with over 40 years experience and over 45 3d printers we can help you make awesome every single day we also have high-end 3d scanning available with our 3d scanners like the ray the eva and soon the Artec spider and i'm very excited to get that in and be able to get higher quality 3d scans yeah it gets better Better than the EVA. It's going to be awesome. But if you don't have anything you want to outsource to us right now, but you are looking to support us, you can do so by clicking on that Patreon or YouTube channel member link in the description down below. By pledging as little as $1 a month, you can help us make videos like this more often because we are looking to expand the content that we are providing to you, the viewer. That'd be a lot of fun, but it comes with an added cost. Any money that you guys would have every month to help us out would be greatly appreciated. And at the $10 tier, how are you going to come hang out with myself, the entire 3D Musketeers team, and some of our Patreon members in our private Discord server, where we like to hang out. We've been playing a lot of Satisfactory, so if that's your kind of thing and you want to come hang out with us, come on over. We'd love to have you. $10 tier or higher. But we get it. Not everyone's got a ton of money to burn, but you still want to help out. A like, comment, subscribe, and hey, share it with a friend or two. Absolutely goes a long way to helping us reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's a long way to go, especially saying that right now. But with your help, it can be made easier. But enough of that. Let's get back into the Excel. Let's talk about the tool changer now. I have some models over here. Uh, we expect uh, one of the popular combinations will be PLA with water soluble supports from BVOH yes. or PVA. Yes. 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 And the uh, Excel yes. can handle these with ease. There is no cross contamination in the nozzle, which would compromise the integrity of the PLA model. This is the big deal that I have with machines like the bamboo and others that use a singular nozzle. Cross contamination of different filaments is a massive problem because you can't always ensure there's not going to be a little bit of that left over. And something like a water soluble support material left over that mixes with your actual printing medium is gonna be disastrous for print quality. So if you are utilizing different materials, I highly recommend that you run your infill before your perimeters, because then if there is some contamination, it's at least on the inside of the model and hopefully not that big of a deal on the exterior. But this is gonna be a massive use case for us, more likely with the carbon fiber filled materials alongside of the water soluble or a dissimilar support material. And there's also no need uh, to wipe excessive amounts of filament to clean the nozzle. So Just great. a small priming tower so the start is sharp so uh, on the model. The tool changer will be soon shipped out to the beta testers. We needed them first to have the single tool testing done and now we need them to go through the upgrade path. Extremely long lead times in various parts of the world are making things really hard but we can't blame all delays on it. We could have done things differently and we are sorry to keep you waiting and keep moving the start of the shipping. That's the bummer. Previously, Prusha had stated we would be getting the single tool head version at the end of the month. Given this video is coming out in February, we know that not to be accurate. And unfortunately, March is going to be when we're going to see the single tool head versions coming out. I hate it. It's not great, and it sucks for those that were really hoping for it or gunning for the machine early. I mean, we certainly were, but it happens. I don't like it any more than anybody else, but that's not going to cause me to just throw away my pre-order. I'm still excited for this machine. As for the multi-tool machines, we expect to start shipping them shortly after the beta tests, which will take about two months. We will send you an email in advance that your reservation is now ready to be turned into the final order. There is no deadline for converting the reservation into an order right now. The date of the reservation is decisive and as soon as you pay for it, you will jump into the right place in the queue. If you want to upgrade your reservation from a single tool uh, into a multiple tool heads, don't finish your order until we start shipping the multi-tool XLs. That's a great point to look at. So those of you that said, oh, I only have a single tool on order. I'm going to up it to a five and I'm going to jump to the front of the line. 
you're not going to, unfortunately. You're gonna have to wait until they start shipping the multi-tools. And I'm proud of Prusa for this because I totally didn't think about this, but you know, it's not impossible for someone to think, huh, I could just get a single and then upgrade it before I pay for it. But Prusa says, no, 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 we thought of that kid back of the line to for you. No cutsies. We don't allow that here. I hope this update answered uh, your questions and gave you better overview of the current situation with the Excel. Thank you for watching and happy printing. So that's the word from the man himself. I have fought constantly for Prusa and I still will because I believe in what they're doing. I believe in their community value and I believe that they're going to have a good machine. These delays though, hit me right where it hurts. We are really trying to ramp up the larger printing that we do and be able to take on more complex jobs that the machines in our current facility just can't handle. We don't have very many machines that are able to do soluble supports, not at least reliably without mixing. And the mixing, as we've talked about, is a little bit troublesome to me. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna wait. As a content creator, I kind of need to get one of these. It's a requirement because everyone else is gonna have one, so I better have one as well. But I have a business case to buy one of these. Now, unlike the bamboo, I don't have work waiting for it, thank God, because calling a client and telling them it's gonna be a two plus month wait is not gonna go over very well. What does that mean for the future of the XL? We can see them. We can see that they work. I saw one at the East Coast Rep Rep Festival, and it was printing pretty well. There were some alignment issues with the tool heads, but they're shipping them across the country and just slapping it on a table at a trade show. I don't expect it to be perfect at a trade show. That's just the way things go. Things always tend to break at trade shows. And I'll say the tool head switching is really, really cool. And I want one so bad because those kind of movements, they're just really cool. And five tool heads do we need it no not not really it's not immediately needed i really only need probably two or three max but it's not that much more for us to go from three heads to five so screw it turn it up to 11 and send it these go to 11. that's what we're all about is making sure that we have the availability to do it should it be required. But I am excited for the XL and I wanna know what you guys think down in those comments below. Are you keeping your pre-order? Have you pre-ordered? And are you going to get one when they come out? I'd love to know. That's all I really have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. All right, Miss Kitty. What are we doing here? Hmm? Bongo cat. Everyone's damn diva. We hit 10K and now she wants her own damn trailer and only the green M&Ms. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all for what you do in making these videos possible. Without you, this channel wouldn't be where it's at. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Right below me will be our previous coverage of the Prusa XL so you can get an idea of where things were at. And right next to that is going to be our series that we've been covering all about getting started with 3D printing for the first time with things like first layer calibration, Z offset, V wheels, belts, and more. So if you like that kind of thing, go click on those, take a look, but I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.